been to a few auto races like the 12 Hours of Sebring and the Gator Nationals just to check them out. It wasn't until I went to the 1994 Bush Clash at Daytona that I became a race fan and it started with NASCAR. I had half watched a few races on Wild World of Sports and couldn't name but a couple of the drivers. The people that took me to the 1994 Bush Clash told me I had to pick a driver to root for. They already had Dale Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace, and Ernie Irvin taken, so I had to pick one from the rest of the field and I didn't know anything about the other drivers. After looking the cars over, I finally picked the number 24 car, only because they had a colorful paint job and it stood out from the black, white, and red cars. They laughed and said, I actually picked a pretty good driver. His name was Jeff Gordon. So we sat in our seats right at the start-finish line and watched the race with whoever having the highest placing driver getting a free lunch and get to pick the place to eat it. I had brought my video camera and recorded most of the race. Here's a few highlights in the finish. Side of Joe. 
holds. The body falls back. It'll be Elliott with the lead. Gant goes to second. Here's Mark Martin to third. Martin all the way down to the inside of the racetrack. Way wide for the third position. Mark Martin with a little grappling help there. Jordan but tucking in behind. Still a two-by-two two battle for third. Do I know how to pick them or what? So they were paying for my lunch, and of course, I picked the Hooters across the street from the track as the restaurant. After that, I was hooked and watched every race as my driver went on to become one of NASCAR's greatest drivers. I tried to take pictures and video at the track, but it was pretty hard when you're on the outside trying to look in. I needed to find a way inside for a better view, and I finally got my chance when someone I knew started racing and was looking for a team photographer. I took the position, and from there it kind of snowballed, and I eventually found myself working for teams in all four of the NASCAR divisions at that time, which was the Goodies Dash Series, the Craftsman Truck Series, the Bush Series, and the Winston Cup.
I had all access at the tracks they raced at, which included Homestead, Charlotte, the Brickyard. Bristol. And of course, Daytona. I got my start with the Goodies Dash team and began to experiment with in-car cameras for different perspectives. This was a few years before the first GoPro came out, so I was using little spy cameras attached to a small camcorder that I mounted inside the race car, and the results were pretty good for that time. It was very cool to be right there in the middle of it all at NASCAR's best tracks and get access to all of the drivers. I even got to fly on one of the team's private jets and that's an experience I doubt I'll ever be able to top. Parking the jet next to the other teams at the airport was pretty surreal. Let's backtrack just a bit to 1998 before I got to be a team photographer and was still just a race fan. The Richard Petty driving experience was going to be at Daytona for a few days offering the ride-along experience. I think at that time they didn't have the driving experience at Daytona yet and only offered that at a few of the smaller tracks. I just had to ride in one of those stock cars so I talked my sister and brother-in-law into coming along with me to Daytona and they brought their kids as well. They knew nothing about NASCAR, and I secretly hoped they would become fans, just like I had. We pulled up to Daytona, USA, located just outside the track, and I bought my ticket for the Petty Ride Along experience, which if I remember right was just about $100. It was also where they got their first look at the kind of car I would be riding in for three laps around the legendary high banks of Daytona. To get inside, we had to take the trolley, and while we were waiting for our ride, we took a look at the track and watched one of the Petty Experience cars in the infamous black number no. 3 Goodwrench Chevrolet Monte Carlo, taking some lucky fan for a lap around the track. excitement building in me. We made it over to the pits where they were running the Petty Experience and I saw they had three cars in the mix including that black number three. And then pulling into pit lane in the background was the number 24 car made famous by my driver Jeff Gordon. That was the car I wanted to ride in. Their system worked on a rotation. A car would pull in, switch riders, drive off for their laps while the next car would pull in and repeat the process. What car you got to ride in depended on your place in line and the rotation of cars. In other words, I didn't have any control over what car I would be riding in and it would just be the luck of the draw. We had to wait for about an hour for my turn so we passed the time watching the action, and my niece passed the time by making fun of my brother-in-law, who was a Jets fan, for hanging out with the Dolphins fan. We even caught the very rare sight of a B-1 bomber taking off from the Daytona airport, which I have no idea why it was there. But at least I could see it didn't have a number three on it. turn 
was coming up soon, so I got in the queue and was fitted for a helmet, and then watched to see which car in the rotation would come up for me. so wanted it to be the 24 car and my niece gave me a high five for support. Once I was about third in line, I could figure out which car I'd be riding in, and guess what? It was the 24, and off I went.
unlike anything I had experienced. When the driver took off down pit lane, he had a cord and was banging through the gears. By the time we got to turn one, I was already going faster than I'd ever been in a car before. Looking at the bank turn, I thought there was no way the car would stay on the track and we'd go flying over the wall. So I quickly grabbed the roll bar by the A-pillar and the driver chuckled. By the time we got out of turn two and started down the back stretch, I finally took a second breath and started to enjoy the ride. The second lap, I was really getting into it with a huge grin on my face. They said we were doing about 170 miles an hour. The experience really was incredible and certainly gave me a newfound appreciation for what those NASCAR drivers do. How they are able to drive four wide around those high bank turns is a mystery to me, but somehow they pull it off lap after lap. My time at the Richard Petty ride along experience was over. The trolley came around to pick up our group and we rode it back to Daytona, USA. I think it was a great experience for everyone, and the kids really seemed to have fun as they took it all in. Okay, you can say anything you want. You let it out now. I think out of all of them, my niece would be the most likely to be the next one to ride in one of those race cars because the stop at the Daytona USA Arcade on her way out showed her need for speed. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this story from one photographer's life.